Hello and welcome to lecture 13 of this series on cavity wall construction. So a cavity wall is a common way of building a wall for a domestic property and it can provide a good level of thermal efficiency and weather protection if it's built correctly. Because there's a number of layers and steps in the construction of a cavity wall, it's important that these things are installed in the correct order and that we use care and skill to avoid any problems. So this short lecture is going to look at the steps involved in creating a simple cavity wall and some of the products that are required. There's a number of resources that we can use to tell us a little bit about what's expected of a cavity wall. Um, this detail is from a document uh, produced in Scotland called the Accredited Details, which covers a number of different types of construction. And we can see there we have a foundation detail for a partial fill cavity wall. Uh, this detail has insulation uh, internally. What we're going to look at today is uh, a, a similar detail, um, step by step, without the internal uh, insulation. So quite a lot of this will be similar to the information that we covered when we did the build up of the foundation for a timber frame wall. So I'll cover uh, it, it quite quickly. So the first step is really to be able to clear the site. We want to be able to take back any topsoil from the footprint of the building and uh, sink a trench that uh, follows the outline of the, the load-bearing structures of the building. And this is going to be the trench for our uh, strip foundation. And in Scotland, what we're trying to achieve is a level for the foundation that would uh, put it down deep enough so that frost is not going to act on it, so that we're not getting the ground moving around. Now this very much depends on the uh, type of ground, um, the location of the building, so, but generally we would say 450 millimetres is uh, a kind of standard size. So the next step would be to pour the strip foundation, and the strip foundation would follow the lines of the load-bearing walls and it's a variable width and depth depending on the loads of the building and the bearing capacity of the soil. Following that, we'd be looking to erect the substructure walls. So this would be two layers of blockwork, usually, and it would be built up of the strip foundation. And these layers would correspond to the width of the cavity wall above. So um, the inner blockwork and the outer blockwork would be immediately below the layers of masonry above. The cavity at substructure level is usually filled with concrete and the top surface of that is sloped um, facing outwards from the building. Following this we can backfill to either side. Um, inside the building we'd be backfilling with 150 millimetres of uh, hardcore or MOT type 1 and that would be well compacted. Um, if we needed more than 150 millimetres, we'd build it up in layers of 150 millimetres maximum at a time. And the outside of the building would be backfilled using uh, soil or gravel or hardcore or uh, depending on the, the use of the, the space outside the building. And it's important that we build these layers up in tandem with each other so there's no possibility of sideways pressure being put on the wall. So we can see these guys here, uh, one of them's got a fuzzy face, um, doesn't want to be recognised, and on the top of the wall we can see the two layers being built up, now this is fairly late on, possibly out of sequence, but um, the guy inside is standing on the, the floor slab um, looking down at the wall, and we can see the wall ties being laid out to cross the, the wall at this point. Uh, they're getting ready to be bedded into the, uh, the mortar joints. But the next step for that is to lay the damp proofing. So we need to protect the wall and we need to protect the floor. Um, inside of the building we've got our hard core so we would blind that with sand um, to provide a level surface and remove all the sharps. And we would then lay over a DPM damp proof membrane and on the top of the wall there would be a DPC and the two of those things would be um, layered together and lapped. So in this photograph 
our two heroes are laying out the DPC in the left hand picture. This guy is uh, layering a roll of DPC on top of the, the blockwork. Um, in the right hand picture we see the DPM from the uh, under from the floor being uh, lapped up and folded back and that's ready to be then sealed with a DPC. So once we've got our damp proofing done we can uh, first of all install our floor inside we can we can pour uh, a floor on top of insulation but more importantly we can install our inner leaf. Now it's unlikely you'd actually install the full height of the, the inner leaf at this point but this is just for illustration. Um, the wall ties would be bedded into uh, the mortar joints of the blockwork and they would then uh, be ready to be able to take uh, insulation. So the insulation is then held against the inside leaf uh, forming a cavity between itself and the outside leaf and the wall ties then pass right away through that so that they can tie the two sides of the wall together and the wall ties would then hold a retaining clip which would be clipped onto them and would hold the, the insulation back and this is usually a, a plastic disc some 75 to 100 millimeters uh, in diameter and they're made to fit on a number of different types of uh, wall ties depending on what was specified. Now there is an important thing about insulation placement within a wall that we'd have to consider within cavity wall construction um, and that is that we need to think about uh, how moisture resistant or vapour resistant uh, the insulation material is. So where we use different types of insulation within a construction we need to use the insulation um, that is least resistant to the passage of uh, water vapour towards the outside of the building. So this is to reduce the possibility of condensation forming in between the insulation layers. So for example, if we were using mineral wool and polystyrene, uh, mineral wool would allow water vapour to pass out, so that we would use that as the outside layer. So once we've got our insulation installed and it's held back with its retaining clips, we can install the outer leaf. Now the outer leaf, um, we need to build that up with a little bit of care because um, if we knock any of the insulation boards and they fall forward, it's very difficult. Obviously we'd have to take the block work down, so it's very difficult to be able to uh, sort that problem out. We also want to make sure that any mortar that's dropped on the wall ties doesn't form a, a bridge for moisture to be able to pass its way to the inside of the building. And it's very rare that we would build a blockwork building um, and, and look at it from the outside and see all the blocks. So usually we're, we're trying to uh, install something that gives us an aesthetic finish. And this is uh, normally some form of render or um, harling or dry dash or whatever you want to call it. It's pretty much the same stuff. And we would probably install that so that the render above the DPC is installed in uh, one layer and below the DPC we've got a separation, we've got a different, different layer. And above the, the DPC there's usually a, a bead, um, a little metal bead that's fixed back to the wall and uh, we would render down onto that so that it gives a slight uh, push out from the surface so that water can drip off. Below the DPC it's common to just have a sand and cement smooth render and that's just really to tidy it off. And if we look at this picture here um, we can see on the uh, left hand side of the screen as you look at it there's uh, the, the finished block work uh, right down at the bottom just visible underneath the scaffold pole we can see that render bead uh, fixed onto the, the wall. The uh, right hand side has received a scratch coat so we are uh, putting on one layer um, and then scratching it so it's got a surface, it's got a tooth and that gives a, a nice surface for the next layer to, to grip onto. So it's very rare that render would actually be installed in one layer at a time. Um, there are some polymer modified renders which go on as one layer, but um, traditional ones you would put on in two or possibly three layers. So 
Internally, we need to provide a finish as well because, again, it's very rare that we have a concrete block that we look at, although there are uh, paint finish ones. Um, so we need some sort of internal finish, but we'll do more on that in a different lecture at a later date. So in conclusion, the construction of a cavity wall is uh, simple when we draw it, but requires planning and skill in execution. Each layer needs to be created in the correct order or erected in the correct order to allow for the installation of the next. And it's essential that the work area is kept clean and clear to avoid anything bridging the cavity. So aspects you should take from this lecture are that a cavity wall requires a double skin foundation, that below the DPC the cavity is filled with concrete, that the load bearing inner leaf is built up first to allow for insulation to be installed, that insulation is held back against the blockwork with plastic retaining clips, and the external render is applied to protect the wall from weather. Okay, thank you very much for listening, and if you've got any questions, please feel free to ask.